the Ukrainians are continuing with their tactic to stretch Russian defences as far as they can. And so what we can see this week is they've begun to open up the offensive in different places, north and south of Bakhmut, north of Bakhmut to Solidar and south of Bakhmut to Ivanivsk. They're, they're doing some important uh, offensives around Marinka at uh, Krasnarivka. And at Vuladar, very important strategically, there is uh, quite a good, uh, good set of evidence that, uh, that Rivnipil has been taken by the Ukrainians, and that would be quite important if they've got that far down. The Russians seem to acknowledge that they have lost Rivnipil. This is one of the big fronts at Orykiv towards Tokmak. This is really tough for the Ukrainians, but they're continuing to push there. And one of the most important, interesting developments is that we now have confirmation that they have crossed the Dnieper River in the Kherson region and are fighting at Oleshki. And the uh, Russians have counterattacked at Oleshki. We're not sure how they've got on. We don't think they've gone on too well, but the fact that they've counterattacked shows that the Ukrainians have actually uh, created a bridgehead on this side of the river. And the uh, purpose of that is to try to persuade the Russians to take more troops away from this front, which is very important, to have to do something about that. The Russians may or may not choose to do that. They've certainly committed some troops to it. Whether they'll commit enough rather remains to be seen. And all this is going on on the background of the soap opera which is now the Prigozhin uh, rebellion, this armed rebellion. Prigozhin, uh, Putin's caterer, the man who was very close to Putin, going back to their old uh, Petersburg days, and they were friends, they were directly connected to each other. And if we look at the way in which they relate to the, the structure of decision-making in, uh, in the uh, whole Ukraine uh, war, it's very curious, because Prigozhin has a direct line into Putin, and he relied on that. He thought that Putin was protecting him. And he certainly used it, and he overstepped the line increasingly in the last couple of months, but very much so in the last week. But formally, the, the system goes from Putin to the defence minister, Shogu, to the chief of the combined forces group who is in charge of what's going on in Ukraine, which is Gerasimov, and this man, uh, 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 Sorovikin. He's very important because he was very close to Prigozhin. It was expected that Sorovikin might come out in favour of Prigozhin. He didn't, but keep your eye on him. This is a soap opera which will keep on going, and like many soap operas, it will probably have some twists and turns yet.